Thank you for joining us. We are on location in Cold Springs, Florida, just outside Stoneman Douglas High School. This is a very unusual way for us to begin the Shalom Show, but we just had a horrible event occur here, absolutely terrible, basically like a terrorist attack. 17 people at least have been killed and others wounded by someone who allegedly is a student. We will learn more about this horrific event following these messages. I heard screaming. I heard about five, six gunshots. We thought they were firecrackers because it sounded like them. We weren't sure what was used. And we heard the police yelling. We were banging on the doors. It's insane. It's, it's, un, it's unnecessary. It's, it's out of, it, it's, there's no words to describe how I feel right now. Like I'm, I was shaking, I was, I was panicking. It was just all out panic about the school. Officials looking at the school shooting in Florida described the suspected shooter's social media posts is quote very very disturbing a former student is accused of killing at least 17 people at a high school in suburban fort lauderdale yesterday he ran up and down the hallway just banging and shooting into the classrooms he shot through my door i think about three in my classroom got hurt i just saw blood everywhere now, in all, 17 people were killed and many more were injured. Police identified the suspect as 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz, a former student at that high school who was taken into custody about an hour after that shooting began. Cruz had been expelled from the high school for unspecified disciplinary reasons. The suspect was arrested and identified as Nicholas Cruz, who once attended the school. He is in custody, and we've already began to, uh, began to dissect his websites and the things that social media that he was on and some of the things that have come to mind are very, very disturbing. He's 19 years old. Uh, he was born in 1998 in September. He was a former student of Douglas High School. Uh, he got expelled for disciplinary reasons. I don't know the specifics. Every member of Congress shouldn't have to experience a horrific mass shooting in his or her district to want to do something to stop horrific mass shootings from taking place over and over again. It's not a question of, of this isn't a debate about, about guns. It's a debate about safety. It's a debate about saving lives. It's a debate about being able to send your kids to school in the morning and know that they're going to come home at the end of the day. So is it time? Yeah, of course it's time to have that debate. But there's no debate. Everyone agrees that this shouldn't happen. And so we ought to be able to, to come together and put everything on the table. Yes, we have to talk about mental health. Yes, we have to talk about keeping guns out of the hands of dangerous people. Yes, we have to figure out why when someone posts the kinds of things that it looks like this shooter posted on social media, that information doesn't wind up preventing him from getting a gun or, or uh, causing someone to, to intervene to get that person treatment. All of these things have to be part of the discussion and we can't wait to have it anymore. A few weeks ago, I was at Douglas and I talked to uh, the politics club and kids who just wanted to come out and, and ask their congressman questions. And I was interviewed by someone from their student TV station. And I just bumped into him this morning uh, after he did an interview. And I, I commended him for being so brave and offered my condolences. And he just looked at me and he said, he said, Congressman, I appreciate that, but uh, here's what we want. He said, we want action. That's what we want. Now, this is a kid who saw his friends die it's the least we can do. My fellow Americans, today I speak to a nation in grief. Yesterday, a school filled with innocent children and caring teachers became the scene of terrible violence hatred, and evil. Around 2.30 yesterday afternoon, police responded to reports of gunfire at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, a great and safe community. There, a shooter, who is now in custody, opened fire on defenseless students and teachers. He murdered 17 people and badly wounded at least 14 others. 
our entire nation, with one heavy heart, is praying for the victims and their families. To every parent, teacher, and child who is hurting so badly, we are here for you, whatever you need, whatever we can do to ease your pain. We are all joined together as one American family, and your suffering is our burden also. No child, no teacher, should ever be in danger in an American school. No parent should ever have to fear for their sons and daughters when they kiss them goodbye in the morning. Each person who was stolen from us yesterday had a full life ahead of them, a life filled with wondrous beauty and unlimited potential and promise. Each one had dreams to pursue, love to give, and talents to share with the world. And each one had a family to whom they meant everything in the world. Today, we mourn for all of those who lost their lives. We comfort the grieving and the wounded. And we hurt for the entire community of Parkland, Florida, that is now in shock and pain and searching for answers. To law enforcement, first responders, and teachers who responded so bravely in the face of danger, we thank you for your courage. Soon after the shooter, I spoke with Governor Scott to convey our deepest sympathies to the people of Florida and our determination to assist in any way that we can. I also spoke with Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi and Broward County Sheriff Scott Israel. I'm making plans to visit Parkland to meet with families and local officials and to continue coordinating the federal response. In these moments of heartache and darkness, we hold on to God's word in Scripture. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. We trust in that promise, and we hold fast to our fellow Americans in their time of sorrow. I want to speak now directly to America's children, especially those who feel lost, alone, confused, or even scared. I want you to know that you are never alone and you never will be. You have people who care about you, who love you, and who will do anything at all to protect you. If you need help, turn to a teacher a family member, a local police officer, or a faith leader. Answer hate with love. Answer cruelty with kindness. We must also work together to create a culture in our country that embraces the dignity of life, that creates deep and meaningful human connections, and that turns classmates and colleagues into friends and neighbors. Our administration is working closely with local authorities to investigate the shooting and learn everything we can. We are committed to working with state and local leaders to help secure our schools and tackle the difficult issue of mental health. Later this month, I will be meeting with the nation's governors and attorney generals. We're making our schools and our children safer will be our top priority. It is not enough to simply take actions that make us feel like we are making a difference. We must actually make that difference. In times of tragedy, the bonds that sustain us are those of family, faith, community, and country. These bonds are stronger than the forces of hatred and evil. And these bonds grow even stronger in the hours of our greatest need. And so always,
but especially today. Let us hold our loved ones close. Let us pray for healing and for peace. And let us come together as one nation to wipe away the tears and strive for a much better tomorrow. Thank you, and God bless you all. Thank you very much.